Hey everyone, Duke Nougat 3D here with another more historically informative type of review rather than an actual gas mask review. But today, I, you guys are probably tired of seeing these things at this point, but I have a decent bit of additional information which has not been covered in any of the previous reviews, so I'd like to get it out of the way here. So this is mostly going to be pertaining how to determine the exact week or date of production on an Akron TSO, or pretty much almost nearly any World War One type mask because the dating system on World War One masks is, t is much different than how it would have been on later masks. Uh, for those of you that know American masks, you'll know that the dating system on them is usually consisting of a molded clock-shaped uh, cartouche, little, little insignia there, which would contain the last two numbers of the year produced, the company logo, uh, possibly the rubber blend, and then this little clock uh, here would have a number of dots indicating the week or quarter of the year it was produced in. So this took three, uh, it was in the first three weeks of uh, January, I believe, if I'm not reading this incorrectly, but it was much different in World War One. It actually took me a decent while to figure out. It actually took a uh, another user on the U.S. Military Forum, who was actually the same person that sold me this particular AT, uh, to recommend what the dating system could have been on these masks. And I pretty much concur that it is probably the correct um, method of determining the date on these. So, um, as some of you may have observed, or may or may not, the most common marking found on ATs would be the AT stamp itself, meaning referring to Akron TSO, obviously. Um, the mold number, which in this case is number four, a mold number uh, 44 for a type B face blank. And then below that was a four digit code, which ha which always began in 18, which I assume is the year, obviously. But the last two numbers never really coincided with any determinable uh, or any, that's not a word, any reference of what it could be. So I I assumed that it had to do with the date. I even went as far as thinking maybe it's a batch number, but I'll, in all honesty, it was likely the date. And now that I've been informed of what that could be, I have now determined that those last two numbers are the week of the entire year. It is the week number of the whole year, not a quarter of the year or anything like that. It is just a single week out of the year. So for instance, my type A here is actually my oldest AT because you may notice that it doesn't have an AT stamp because the date on this one is 1824, the 24th week of 1918, which would incidentally put the beginning of this, this mask's production lot at, beginning at June 10th, 1918, which is actually a day before the AT contract was finalized, which explains why this does not have an AT stamp, because this is technically a pre-AT mask. It is still an AT, but it is um, the production run on this particular lot started uh, a day before the actual contract was finalized. And so what we have here is not only a very rare, it's like one of two known examples of a type A Akron TSO, but this is also a pre-production AT. And even stranger is the example that older masks are best owns, which uh, I'll probably link the video of his video on his channel. His does not have any sort of markings down here whatsoever. No mold number, no, no date number, nothing. Just the serial stamp on the side, which means this is probably earlier than mine. And I'm sort of debating whether or not these early type A's classify as American TSOs and not Akron TSOs considering these are pre-production, but nevertheless they're still type A's. And another thing that I want to point out about the type A's is that they may in fact be gum rubber, red-brown gum rubber. I know it looks black, but there are faint tinges of brown here and there. Um, I don't doubt that the... What, one thing that tipped me off is the TSO deflectors here. Um, are a very noticeable solid black color, whereas the rubber of the face blank and the chin rest sort of have a brownish sort of maroon tinge to it. It's very hard to notice on camera. So that would lead me to indicate that originally um, the Type A's were made sim very similar to the American Tiso out of patched together calendared red-brown gum sheet rubber, um, which is Obviously why this was so easy to open, because as you know, the Type B's are made out of a dip molded black rubber, which the dip molding process back then, um, you have to imagine though, this is something that I never mentioned, but dip molding wasn't really perfected until the 1920s. So the Type B's were kind of working off of experimental molding methods when they were 
dip molding these. And so given the volatile nature of the solvents used to create the liquid rubber compounds back then in 1918, that's why so many of these are rock hard. And that's why I was able to get the type A opened up because it didn't use any of those volatile um, compounds for dissolving the rubber. It just used standard calendar sheet gum rubber stock. Um, anywho, back on to dating the ATs here. Uh, my type B here is stamped 1845, which is obviously the 45th week of 1918, which would put this at, uh, I believe this is a November contract number. I could be wrong. I know Moulage's La France Akron Tiso that I've reviewed it in the past. That one was stamped with a, um, I don't remember the number, the specific number. I believe it was um, 1844. I could be wrong. Uh, actually, it might have been a little bit earlier than that, but it was definitely an October contract date. So interesting thing about the October contracts is because all of the ATs that I've seen that have red stamps on them, like all of mine have black stamps from what I notice, and all the ones with red stamps seem to be dated in October, which is very strange. Also, I should mention that there are, in fact, ATs out that will not existing that we know of, but there are visible photographs that show ATs with a different dating system where instead of the actual, you know, the last two numbers of the year plus the week of the year, it just goes by the the day of the year. Because so, I've seen a um, an AT that was stamped 266 instead of 18 and then the last two numbers obviously meaning the week of the year. So that 266 would defer that it was produced in September of 1918. So a thing to keep in consideration if you see an AT that has visible markings and it's stamped with a three digit code instead of four digit for the date. So um, unfortunately with my size medium stamped AT, as you can see, it is so balled up, I cannot actually access the markings and I, I am really tempted to boil this thing to try and open it up, but I'm not sure if it'll actually be successful. And so I am not going to tempt it, attempt to do so currently, but it may be a, a thing I'll attempt in the future when me and Moulage have a workshop set up for this type of stuff. But in the meantime, I'm just going to leave it as is, but and that being said, that's really all the information I have on ATs updated since the last reviews. It's just, this is a big breakthrough of being able to determine what time of the year ATs were produced. And all the physical examples of ATs that I've seen in any photographs which have visible markings have date stamps with co that coincide with the contract span of the AT. Because as you recall, the, the contract for the Akron Tiso lasted from June 11th, 1918 all the way into, um, some sources vary, some say it ended in December of 1918, some say it even went all the way into uh, like early 1919, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and say it ended in December of 1918. Um, so another thing to point out is that um, the whole reason that we figured this out is because the user said that what if it was like the way they date the carriers, and I didn't even realize that myself, so that's how you can determine um, how you're what date your carrier is because as you can see it uses the same um, uh, dating system where the 18 refers to 1918 and then 41 is the week of the year. So I have, actually I have an earlier dated carrier with my AT here because this is uh, the 41st week of 1918. This one's the, the face piece is the 45th week of 1918. So a bit of a mix match uh, in terms of the carriers. I assume they're just pulling from existing stock because obviously when they were producing these masks they were getting parts from several different companies and they were all accumulating at the gas defense plant in Long Island, New York, where they were assembled into the final masks. Uh, one thing that I have not been able to fully determine in regards to the AT is the exact production numbers, because some sources say that the actual parts produced, or at least face blanks, there was, they say there was around 30, or like 300, oh, like well over 300,000 face blanks for the AT produced, but most sources will say only under 200,000 were produced as well. And what's even stranger is the original contract um, specifications for the AT said that there was they were only contracting about 150,000 face blanks to be produced for testing. And they might have produced more after the fact just because it was turning out to be a successful design so they wanted to experiment with it more. But that's how you can tell that these were definitely an experimental mask is because they were very, very few were originally intended to be procured for testing. Um, and of course, that this unfortunately, this contract does not determine the difference between the type A and type B face blanks. All I, I'm quite certain the majority are in reference to the type B given that the fact that the type B would be 
somewhat easier to mold and that and pe typically when documents refer to the AT they picture the type B and not the type A so that's just a thing to consider I guess is I haven't really figured out fully how many ATs were officially produced but I'm just gonna go by the official documents that I've seen and say that it, the actual completed masks ranged within just under 200,000 and then the actual completed face blanks um, ranged well over 38 uh, 338,000, I believe it was. I could be wrong. It was something. It was something over 300,000 uh, face blanks completed. Anywho, I'm rambling on. I'm sure you're bored to death by this point. But if you're, if you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them down in the comments below. Uh, I'll be sure to give you the best of what I know so far. I'm Duke Nuka 3D, and I'll see you all later.